Welcome back. Let's talk about the big Chinese company that's making headlines all across the world right now for the amount of data that's being collected of Indian citizens. 10,000 Indian personalities and institutions and families, right from the Prime Minister and the President of our country to even sports personalities, noted authors are on this list of the Chinese company. Now, this is a report that emerged in the Indian Express today, an exhaustive report from multiple pages, goes into details of what this company is, how they've been collecting this data, and most importantly, their links to the Chinese government. Yes, this Chinese company, Zenua Data, is, uh, is uh, reportedly linked to the Chinese government. They claim Chinese government and the community, uh, Communist Party of uh, China are actually their clients. They sell this data and intelligence services based on this data that they collect to the Chinese government. Now, what is it that they do? Let me just give you a very brief picture. I will leave it to the experts to help us understand further on it. They collect massive data day after day after day in real time. And then they refer to it and offer threat in, uh, uh, intelligence services. They track the digital footprint of key personalities. Create information library, log files day after day. It's, it's, it's like one information database about everything that may be available out there about a certain person. And they do this via multiple sources. These could be media reports, these could be public documents, uh, government documents, it could be official documents of any other kind, uh, social media, anything that's available on digital media gets gathered, analyzed, data mined, and then the relevant information is given to their clients. Uh, they also look into relations between people and different institutions, which is why you will see that on the list, are not just big personalities but also their families and big personalities across the board so there are political representatives the relatives of these big uh, political representatives business personalities judges including the chief justice of india journalists actors sports person religious figures like radhema is on this list activists crime accused top bureaucrats niti ayuk uh, chief is actually also on this list DGP is top cops of various states, scientists and what the scientists are actually up to and academicians. These are the categories and we'll keep running those names for you through this show. So the one big question that we will be asking tonight and getting you an answer is what does this mean? If this company is collating all of this data, should we be concerned and if we have to be concerned in what sense? Now I ask this question because there are many existing companies that you and I know of who do the same and not just for the big names but for the common man as well i'll give you some examples to, examples to put this in perspective google records every search that you perform every page that you visit they record every youtube video that you watch they especially take a note of the youtube recommendations that you click on maps log everywhere you go even if the app is closed how long, what route you have taken if you have the maps on your phone. Google can track your location even if it is turned off. They can scan your Gmail messages reportedly. This has been said very uh, uh, in many places. Facebook, for example, registers every post that you open, every post that you read, you like, every video that you watch, uh, for how long you watch it. They register, keep a log of all of this history to analyze who you are. They have a history of everything that you've ever, in the last decade or more, clicked on while being on Facebook. Social media giants, all of them across the board really do that to find various ways to keep you engaged. Uh, to want, if you want to know more, there is, a, there is a new film that has emerged that gives you an idea of the way our digital footprint is being mapped. So tonight viewers, let's talk about the reality of the digital era. And let's also talk about if it's just China or many other governments who are doing this, how do they mine this data and where should we be concerned? Do we actually need some laws in place? Is that even possible? I have too many questions. Let's say good evening to Gopal Agrawal, national spokesperson for the BJP, Srinivas Korali, independent researcher, Ritesh Bhatia, cyber security expert, and Nikhil Pawa, editor for Media Nama. Ritesh, I just want to start with you first to help our viewers understand what is this Chinese company doing uh, and 
to if there should be a point of concern um well uh, you know the the concern should have been there uh, i mean several years back especially you know we are uh, we are over here uh, without any data protection law also so the concern has been there almost every day and since the past two years you know we've been talking about data protection law but it is just i don't know uh, just not happening unfortunately as far as this particular company is concerned you know uh, you know i just don't want to complicate it by using too many technical jargons but uh, let's let's take you know the big data or the data analysis that uh, data analytics that we call as they they gather a lot of data that data can be structured data uh, unstructured data and then they mine that data you know so as to get certain information uh, which is going to be like relevant and uh, and then can be like targeted so now this is done by almost everyone you know this is done by like uh, e-commerce companies this is done by the government this is done by almost everybody so that they are like you know they can provide you i mean in the good part they can provide you let's say with some uh, targeted uh, services good services or whatever you need like the way you see on e-commerce stores that if you have bought this you might want to have this and things like that like the auto complete and all those kind of so this company would do the similar thing take a lot of data and the data tanvi was not only just from the open uh, you know uh, open source information like you know what you get on the social media and all they also took it from another source as per the reports i mean whatever uh, report i read that even from the dark web i mean how did they get that because so many breaches have happened uh, okay so even our information has gone over there in the dark web so they would even take that and again run the algorithms use their ai uh, artificial intelligence and build a lot of data that would be valuable to those companies and it's just not the indians that they have targeted i mean there are like around about i think 2.4 million people they have been targeting uh, world over tanvi so so let me let me you know the one thing that uh, many people are asking today and maybe nikhil you can come in on that um to what extent is this legit uh, and data collection and data mining and, and and or does it go beyond that into surveillance and snooping of any kind uh well tanvi i think uh, the indian government itself had wanted to put out a social media monitoring tool uh, against which Mahua Moitra had gone to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court then made an observation. Justice Chandrachur had made an observation that uh, that this level of mass surveillance, this level of 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 monitoring of social media, effectively amounts to mass surveillance. The point is that all of us put out a lot of information about ourselves in the public domain, um, and it is easy for someone to track that over a period of time across platforms. figure out who what our relationships are who we engage with all of this information is being put out by us so the real wake up call here is for citizens that we need to be more conscious and more careful about what data we put out because someone could be profiling us um ritesh's information about uh, them taking data from the lack dark web is a little concerning because there you would have information that you might have wanted to keep private like passwords etc but apart from that all of this information is already in the public domain and uh, you know why is it surprising to us that uh, you know uh, a country that is of significance to india and for whom india is of significance is maintaining a dossier on people who are important uh, every country does that so i don't think this is surprising in the very least i honestly think there is much more being made out of this than we should because this is common practice facebook has more data about you than this database probably would i mean of about these individuals so would twitter if people are twitter users so would google yes, if in fact in fact nikhil exactly why we are we, yeah. we wanted i wanted to have this conversation yeah. today is for these were things that you, uh, you know and 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 you know many on our panel know and i would know uh, but many of our viewers may not know that many yeah. countries do this uh, so perhaps the, far the more if not the, at the same levels and many but, of the existing corporations do it and we willingly give the data so if you could you know yeah, elaborate but, a little but, more but, on that i think it will also help people there is Nikhil. you know this this one point that you made right at the beginning of the show tanvi which is extremely relevant that this is how the digital ecosystem itself functions this is how advertising online functions 
It is built around collecting vast amounts of data about us, profiling us, understanding our relationships, doing behavioral targeting, and those are very useful when it comes to information operations. So the risk really for India, the risk lies that there are people who, of, who are in uh, positions of influence who are putting out information that can be, uh, in, in the public domain, that can be collated, analyzed, and then used to manipulate them. So it isn't that this is not risky. It's just that apart from the dark web stuff, most of it doesn't seem to be illegal. It is not illegal to profile people. It's not illegal to do behavioral targeting. The, the personal data protection bill, you spoke about the potential privacy law. The personal data protection bill, which is with the Joint Parliamentary Committee, does not make any of these things illegal. And frankly, much of the internet will not function if you're, in, uh, and many of our services won't get delivered the way we like them to be delivered. If some companies aren't able to do, do for example, personalization, of services to you. So it's a very tricky balance. There are no easy answers here. There are no right answers here. There is a problem when the same techniques that are used by people mm. to deliver us good uh, services that the, in the way that we want them could also use them to hurt us or harm us. And in fact, our governments are also collecting vast amounts of data. I'm so Srinivas Kodali can go into much detail about what's happening in Telangana because to me, that is far more worrying than what Sinua Corporation has from scraping social media information, you know. Then we. Oh, okay, okay. I, I take your point. Uh, in, in fact, uh, Srinivas, do you want to come in uh, here is, itself uh, in terms of differentiating what this company may be doing uh, and what several other organizations may be doing, which may be including governments in some places, which may be a lot more concerning for us? Uh. Tani, the issue is this is how the industry operates, okay? Uh, it's intelligence, and intelligence is used in every industry. Whether it's, it's the market, you use intelligence in the stock markets, right? If you actually go to the Wall Street, the people at the Wall Street who are probably looking, following Elon Musk on what he's going to tweet to, to understand how the markets are going to move. But the problem, essentially, that is happening is we are ignoring it. Uh, we have let a lot of private companies to do whatever they want, and that's harming us. So take the case of Palantir, for example. Uh, like the, the Chinese company we have, Palantir has extensive relationships with the U.S. military and uh, the CIA, for example. All of this data is shared with the U.S. government, and so does every other government uh, does these kind of practices. But the issue is... Uh, we are, not, we are ignoring it at a massive scale, and there are calls at the UN. For example, the UN Rapporteur on Privacy has been making these demands to get uh, privacy as a human right across the world. It's not necessarily that it's very specific to India. Now, if you, if you look at the Chinese problem that we are having, I think we should be concerned, but we shouldn't be alarmist. Uh, they are collecting this data, but all of this data is publicly available. If you, as a, a media person, can track this data, so does a Chinese company or a Chinese military can do it. The, the concern should be rather how are they able to acquire this data and if they're able to acquire this data by buying it from Indian companies. That's an that's a, a important concern. And in fact, we have seen several instances where the Indian army, for example, has asked soldiers not to use Chinese devices or Chinese apps. Now, that's again a concern. Uh, these are things that need to be outlined through laws. Unfortunately, we haven't done that. And it's probably a serious time we need to look into it. Now, if you look at some of the practices that the private industry has been doing it, there's a company called Clearview, which has scraped everybody's photos from the internet and is offering a facial recognition service. Now, that's something that uh, a, a government like Telangana government is really interested to, uh, to buy services of this company. They haven't bought it. I'm saying they're buying similar services of facial recognition firms to identify everyone in the state and, and potentially through the national facial recognition system across the country. The danger is the collection of this data without informing the user. And internet companies have been long allowed to collect this data, and I think that needs to stop fundamentally. 
Okay, Mr. Gopal Agarwal, do you want to come in on this issue? First of all, uh, you know, what, what's your own party's uh, view, the way these, uh, you know, this list has emerged of people who are being tracked? Is there a concern? Definitely, Tanvi, uh, it's, it is a concern. But the thing, there are two, three things we should all understand. And I come to your debate only, so many of the issues which are complicated, uh, I also get to know about them. So these are important uh, discussions. I think what I think uh, with, with what we are working on e-commerce policy and the data uh, server co-location, all those issues, what the thing is, there are two, three points which we should be very clear about, is that who is the owner? The law will only decide who is the owner of the data. And that ownership has to be the person who is collecting or the person whose data it is. That can be clarified by the law which the government is looking at. Second thing is where this whole data will lie, where the server can lie and how uh, uh, within the geographical domain of the country. This is another important factor which the law will decide. And that is where, where uh, how the government will like to protect the data. And the third important point in this particular case is that how this Chinese company got acquired this data. Did they get it from Facebook? or did they collect it from the social open media? So the important thing is, if they have done anything legal, then different countries from where they got, whether it is from Facebook or from Twitter or any other or Indian company, that is completely illegal. And those companies or those countries' law will take care. The important point, another point that comes to my mind here is, that there has to be a massive uh, awareness campaign from the people. Because ultimately, if you are putting any data into your public domain, then uh, uh, that do, uh, definitely that data will be analyzed and utilized. And the issue about uh, what is artificial intelligence, that is the what artificial intelligence is. That in the future, when we are talking about all these things, we will use them and you will we will deal with them. So the uh, ultimately, uh, 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 yeah. that for last point that I would like to mention is for what this company is using and if it is using for anything clandestine operations so like uh, what if the company Antart is giving it to Chinese government yeah so the, the, like uh, Cambridge Antarctica uh, Analytica or where, wherever if they are using it for uh, sub espionage or anything the, that is where uh, the uh, use, if they are trying to influence the, the domestic elections, these are the issues which have to be looked into. And I think the government is quite aware on those issues and working on them. But we need to build a consensus. If we extend the privacy debate to a large extent, okay. if we are not aware about the people themselves are not very cautious about the, their own security of data or privacy or what they put on the public domain and everything the people want that the government law should control. So there are uh, uh, walls between where government can do what people have to do and what uh, criminal or uh, civil liabilities will arise out of it. Okay, fair enough. So let me let me take this one question. Nikhil, you wanted to make a point and then I have a couple right. of questions, but go ahead, please. Thanks, thanks, Tanvi. I just wanted to respond to a few things that Gopalji said. Uh, firstly, the personal data protection bill, which is with Minakshi Lekhi's joint parliamentary committee, um, it does not define who owns the data. It just defines who is the data fiduciary or who's responsible for the data. So even when the law does come out as per the bill, it's probably not going to say, uh, it's not going to make the citizen the owner of the data by uh, as per the law. Uh, the second thing that he mentioned was about the fact that uh, data co-location or data localization might would help in addressing this problem. I think he's mistaken here because this most of the, this data, as far as we can tell from the reports across multiple media pub publications, except for the dark net, which, uh, uh, which Ritesh mentioned, is all uh, publicly available information. So even if the data was located in India, it could still have been scraped, scraped from the open internet, no matter where it's located. So data localization is not a solution to problems like these. So I, I would say that uh, these, this, these are, this is something for him to consider. The third thing is, and where the personal data protection bill becomes important, 
is that if any entity is collecting personal information, then they need to take the user's consent. So when the personal data protection bill comes out, any company that has collected personal information, even if they've scraped it off the public internet about us without our consent, there is a possibility that they could be sued for, for collecting that information without consent because it's personal information. Uh, I think that that's that uh, that's sort of situation that might arise then. It'll have to be challenged in court though. No, but once you are using... So let me, let me uh, go back to Ritesh because the one point that he made that has uh, gotten... Just one point I want to make. Yes, one yes. Point. Sanjeev, because Sanjeev. if you are using social platforms Sanjeev. and your preferences, etc., are clearly out in the public domain. You cannot just uh, be, uh, if you are using a public platform, even if you are buying through credit card, everything, that, that is what artificial intelligence and that is creating value for artificial intelligence, etc. So it is the most important part is the public awareness about what they are sharing. I, com I completely agree with you there. Public awareness is extremely important. So here is my query then. So it, it, the data, so for example, Facebook has my data or Instagram has my data or YouTube has my data or uh, uh, my profile, my digital profile, what I like, what I don't like, um, uh, uh, you know, what I watch, what I don't watch, what outrages me when I watch it. All of that is with Facebook. They can use it and, in, in, and put in artificial intelligence into that to then throw ads back at me or throw posts back at me or, or, or influence me and lead me in whichever way they want. But they can't take that information, Nikhil, and, and, and give it to the Chinese government, can they? That's no, where the distinction lies. So, no, they can't give it to the Chinese government, uh, although in the past they did give it to a researcher who gave it to Cambridge Analytica. Uh, but in this case, there is no indication that, these, that the platforms have given it to them. My point is the platforms actually have far more data right. on you. And if the platforms are then uh, in any case, like what's, what, what the problem with the Chinese apps in India was that those platforms like TikTok, et cetera, could potentially have been controlled by the Chinese government under Chinese yes. law. And so the risks with Chinese apps are far greater. And which is why given the fact that we are in a national security situation with China, to my mind, it was right for the Indian government to ban the Chinese apps. This case is just a little too much being made out of someone scraping data and profiling us. While that needs to be, we need to figure out ways of addressing those issues. It's not a significant, it's not something that isn't probably happening already. Like I said, every country would have, do, have dossiers on significant citizens uh, in, in, in countries that are of significance like India. So that, that's not surprising to be honest. Okay. Uh, Ritesh, do you want to come in and maybe shed a little bit more light on that one thing that you said that's got everybody's attention of information that they may have also mined from the dark web? Yeah. Uh, so, Tanvi here, like, you know, uh, I completely second Nikhil about uh, all the points that he's made and, uh, you know, including uh, Gopalji's awareness part that we are talking about because somehow, you know, we are really creating a lot of digital pollution. Okay. And by, by digital pollution, I mean, you know, putting up s such like kind of unnecessary data, which shouldn't be there also online. And we need to somehow like, you know, uh, take, take charge of it uh, kind of, you know, it's like kind of a wake up call also right now, because if you see, uh, uh, Tanvi, if you uh, if you uh, if you see, like you know, when we are talking about the big data uh, and other kind of things, those Chinese companies have been able to do it. And from this, enjoy, uh, you, you know, from this company-related thing, I must tell you one thing: that uh, China definitely believes in digital surveillance. They have the best of the tools also. And so now it is even our turn. It is the turn of all the other nations also as to how are we also going to protect ourselves. Yes, I understand about the citizens that, you know, we can go do awareness, but you can just do that much because as you said, like, you know, if you're giving all your data to Facebook and you're getting services out of it. Okay, so now it comes the responsibility of the platform also and the government to like, you know, uh, you know, put accountability on, on them and uh, so that these things like really don't go out as such. And so hence, we also need to control, but, you know, we'll be able to just control only that much. Uh, when it comes to, you know, since we 
spoken about the Chinese app bans and other kind of things because those apps were like you know actually quite notorious in taking up a a lot of our data. But what happens? Like you know, there is a uh, you know I would say a, like a kind of a di digital invasion. I mean, if you look at if you look at the cyberspace, if you look at all our hardware. They are there from China, whether it is in the telecom industry, the medical industry, whether it is our wireless routers, our laptops, our mobile phones, it's all over there. So, you know, there is uh, something that we should also worry about that because you've taken care of the app part, but that's just a fraction of a thing. But if you really want to, like, you know, avoid this digital surveillance by the foreign lands, then in that case, we also need to, uh, you know, up our technologies and 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 look at it uh, and you know adopt these latest technologies so that uh, you know this data the sensitive data at least don't fall prey into the other uh, countries as such okay shrinivas go ahead please so i just wanted to talk about this emerging practice of uh, big tech companies working with uh, the nation states you would see that happening in the US, whether it's any of the big five or companies like Palantir, Clearview, working with the US government agencies, or if it's the NSO group, which made the WhatsApp Pegasus group, working with the Israeli state intelligence units. And even in India, every nation state is trying to actually promote these kind of entities because they realize it is strategically important for their geopolitical uh, reasons. So we need to be actually looking at the larger problem across the world. And I, I will not limit it to China. China is indeed a problem, uh, but because we are neighbors to China, but the threat is not necessarily only from China. And the threat from a nation state point of view to these important... Hmm. Sorry. So to, to these important VIPs is actually hmm. more from systems like... Uh, the WhatsApp Pegasus, which could be monitoring your real-time activities rather than some of these open source systems. While we should be concerned about this, the larger debate is being undermined when the government is only focusing on China. I think we should keep a open view about what's happening here, what's wrong here, and equally look at all of these issues. So let me take it a step, step further. Uh, and in fact, what Ritesh raised was what was on my mind as well. Mr. Gopal Agarwal, I'm just coming to you. But Shri, I'm just coming to you. But let me just get, uh, follow this up with one more thought, uh, which is about the overall holistic picture of what China is doing. Uh, and, and with all of their hardware equipment, you know, the whole debate over, over Huawei and what they're providing, uh, the software equipment, their investments into all these apps. It, 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 if you holistically look at the extent of control that they have on things that are li linked to our digital life or phone on our devices, doesn't that then become scary, Srinivas? It does it is important to be concerned of it. What I'm essentially saying, the same concerns also apply to the US big tech or the Israeli big tech or the Indian big tech that's emerging. The issue is of this uh, nation state, okay, big tech, okay. nation state access. Okay, fair enough. I took your point there. Uh, fair, so the concern is not just coming in from China, but what uh, several other countries may be doing, viewers. Keep that in mind. At the end of the day, it's, the more we are aware of these issues, the more we will be able to understand where we are headed and what's at risk. Yes, Mr. Gopal Agarwal, go ahead and make your point before we move on to the next aspect of this debate. Uh, well, two things I want to mention here. One thing I agree with Srinivaji that we are at present having a difficult relations with China. Therefore, we are very much alarmed about this, but other countries are surely doing it and there is no uh, question about it. And uh, I had read one novel on files, how the even Germany or other uh, communist countries were doing about that. We had uh, Mitrokin papers, how Russia was doing about those things. These are uh, always coming to our light that these kind of surveillance are taking place. The for, we have been talking about the solution. I think uh, uh, we also should have a discuss that geographical location and data co-location and hardware location data 
local localization into the country is a one solution that alone and awareness these two alone can uh, can prepare our countries for to fight this kind of uh, uh, illegal use of data definitely companies will collect they will use it for business purposes the government doesn't completely doesn't want that uh, whole business as a uh, use of intelligence of commercial intelligence should be stopped because that will completely derail the artificial intelligence or uh, uh, coming out with a better service delivery etc but the thing is that illegal use of data using it for clandestine purposes alone that can be controlled only through data localization and server being located in india we should have consensus no. <laughs> okay I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so Mr. Gopal Agarwal, you know, I was just going to say when you began your answer that today is truly a dear diary moment that our panelists, especially Nikhil and Srinivas, and you are all agreeing with each other. But I'm, just I'm as you made your point, I could see two of them, uh, you know, shaking their heads and not agreeing with this specific point. So le let's go to Nikhil first, and then to the others. Yes. Look, Tanvi, as I said in my previous comment, data localization <laughs> will do nothing to. address this issue unfortunately and i am sorry to say this but you have to understand how the internet works in order to understand whether data localization will solve this problem or not if information is in the public domain how will data localization solve this the only solution to this problem of scraping of public data is if if the india closes off its internet like china's and i don't think that as a democratic country that wants friendly relations with other countries and are not adversarial in the way that china is that we would want to close off the internet data localization so is no way to solve this. this problem i'm sorry mr gopal but you are wrong there is then no way that data then you localization... will have to agree that we will have to live with this no no but I'm, then the only solution is in... the public yes absolutely public yeah, awareness and unless you want india's internet to become like china where we can act, access because only you can access no, only the services how will you how the laws will it, stop I'm this i'm sorry but no but uh, go back to the point the is that do you, is is this is this the internet that you want in this country that only no, indian no, services then, and only Nikhil indian apps we block out Nikhil the rest Nikhil of the no, world and we isolate you ourselves are, like china nikhil ji one this thing if you are only talking about problems where you will get No, no, you are wrong. No, no, uh, uh, Mr. Gopal Agarwal, may I just come in here? I think, Mr. Gopal Agarwal, I think the point right now, the point isn't about whether you want data to be stored local, locally here or not. Or the point that Nikhil is making is that's not going to help in this specific regard. No, the issue that we are talking about, the way we live our lives in the digital era, the information which is available. Okay. Explain only how about the public? How? No, only no. Let me complete my question. The only way which will be in the public domain, other than which is on the dark net you are talking about, which are pri uh, privately you have not agreed to share. Those, if uh, any company or uh, will be shared, you have. If you have a jurisdiction, you can control. Otherwise, so Sir, you public can't, data is you open to all. You can't control the dark web. <laughs> you won't be able to control the dark web anyway. Even if data is localized, it can be stolen and taken out into another country. I so mean, then, I'm sorry, then, sir, but you have then, to understand so, how the internet works. Then, to be able then to you say said there thing. is no solution to this problem. No, but I'm saying your solution is not the solution, and it's coming from the fact that you don't understand. <laughs> so you give me the solution. Very evident from how you are saying these things and what you're saying that you don't understand how Nein, these things work. But then you give the solution, I, sir. You give so the well, solution. At least at least i'm not giving the wrong solution because at least i understand the problem from here no problem to we also understand but the so if okay. you are not talking about the solution what is the okay. use I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, i'll i'll give you a solution i'll give you a solution yes sir very if, simply give citizens the right to control who collects their data how and be able to understand there. how much data they've collected and 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 essentially those companies that don't give citizens of india those the right to check and 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 delete their data ban them from accessing the country data localization won't solve this problem but those companies that don't give us control over our own data as citizens as individuals that is guaranteed to us under the fundamental right to privacy and take that approach that's your solution 
and and prosecute the companies who then betray our trust and break that contract and sell our data any which way to a third party so, uh, and break our trust the there. Indian, those are the ones one who need to be here. then taken no, to one task thing, one question and with one thing if they are not in within the indian jurisdiction how will you now uh, penalize or uh, con uh, convict a chinese company if it is not uh, can... having its uh, jurisdictional uh, 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 place of business in india sir in in india's submission to the open ended working group at the united nations india has said that the country's sovereignty must extend to data of india citizens even outside its its physical boundaries so the country itself is but accepting then, the then data the local identity should respect it na if the country is not respecting that and and you can block services no. and apps that don't it's not, conform it is to the your problem your in china norm that it is not giving citizens no, those rights no it right. is not the problem with the country which is accepting it it is the problem with the country okay all right all right let me let me norm. let me let me bring in our other two panelists as well ritesh what what's your own sense what's the solution to what uh, the problem we are discussing here tonight no no so uh, so firstly you know data localization is like definitely not the solution how much ever you would want to have it and all that's fine that's uh, that's another strategic call that you really need to take the government needs to take but the uh, but yes uh, having the personal data protection bill coming out soon is it should have been the priority and sh should be the topmost priority secondly uh, uh, you know as you rightly said tanvi about the penalties like you know you had asked me a question related to the dark web i mean so much of information has gone out so much of data from even from the indian companies or even if they are international companies but holding data of the indians have have been breached and gone so what what is the penalty what are the punishments where are the offenses defined as such so and you know how much accountable are these intermediaries have you like really done something about it i don't think so every like a data breach has now become like a corona kind of a thing okay today you know now 90 more 90000 more cases so it's as good as oh today another a breach of like 4 lakh credit cards another breach of 2 lakh debit cards everything is there on the dark web you know people are paying a ransom and all but so what is the solution the companies are also taking it way too lightly is uh, so you know here hence these things like really need to be made kind of like criminal uh, if if not anything else i mean they should be like kind of punishable i'm sorry for using the word criminal but it should be like really punishable and uh, yes as far as the citizens are concerned they also need to understand the risk uh, because let me give you a very simple example that you know viewers when you go to a restaurant they just ask you for the feedback of how the food was how was the presentation you only need to just say that excellent good bad that's it you know now they need to ask you your date of birth your anniversary your address and everything no so we need to also inculcate Uh, in calculate this pri privacy thing in ourselves no that i don't want to give you more information so this is something that we need to understand that why do you want to know like even if it's an app you know why would any food delivery app would want to know uh, take a permission of your gallery no so you know these are the things small small things that you need to be aware of and just practice that so you know once that the privacy thing is within you automatically like you know things can just get better and probably we'll have like as i always say you know lesser of a digital pollution than we can we 10 second i just want 10 seconds. you know we we talk about it so often one minute one minute mr gopal agrawal we talk about this so often uh, and we say that the people need to be aware this has become the reality uh, one of the biggest talking points but some, some often we ourselves forget maybe let our guard down i just want to put this out there when i watched the social dilemma this weekend uh, i went back to my phone i picked up my phone i went through all the apps the permissions that some of the apps have and i re realized that some uh, uh, apps had permissions uh, to various folders that they just didn't need at all for their functioning or existence and it was just there uh, and constant tracking was on so yes i think i will agree with all of our panelists tonight that first up the user awareness has to be there what are the apps on your phone what are the social media giants any any company for that matter any app for that matter what are they tracking on what they do how much of it are they storing to what extent have you given you, your permission to them to store that data for how long are they storing that data uh, do you really need them to you know process that and throw up easy options and convenient options for you and if you don't need it 
can you really disable it so that they don't store this data at all and this is the last point i very quickly wanted to discuss and Srinivas, if i can come to you on I that you made this uh, you refer to this can in your first seconds. answer also no mr gopal agarwal i really need to come this spot to this point when i'm running out of time uh, the the larger uh, uh, you know setup Srinivas, of how we live our lives in the digital age the amount of our profiling, our choices, our behavioral characteristics that are being saved, uh, recorded, analyzed, mined by company after company, sold from one to the other. Now, is that something we just need to make our peace with? Or like this movie Social Dilemma says, is there merit to this humane technology or, you know, going about a more responsible way? See, uh, the practices have been put out. You can ban them, but it's, it won't go away. If you look at systems like facial recognition, which have come up, several US cities are banning them, but private companies are still practicing them. This won't go away, but what we can do is we can make it harder for these companies to operate. And the only way you do that, you essentially uh, break them apart. There's an increased debate that's happening in the US especially on how do we look at not uh, all the big five tech companies in the US. And I think that should not be limited to the US, but also across the world is essentially what allows these companies to exploit people and their data. And the only way you can uh, push back is make it really hard for them to operate. Right now, you're making it very easy for them to operate because nation states want this economic capital. India is pushing Jio or, and other big tech companies because it wants that Indian big tech to emerge to compete with the American and the Chinese big tech. So that that is an important factor. And unfortunately, we at least are ignoring in our country right now. And that debate is essentially going to uh, de uh, determine what's going to happen for the future of the world. It might happen in the US, it might happen in India or China, but that's the debate we need to have. That's the debate we need to have. Maybe another day we will dedicate the entire hour to that conversation. I am completely out of time. But as always, thank you so much to all of you for joining. Okay, 30 seconds, Mr. Gopal Lagarwal. 30 seconds, I promise uh, you. Only Go ahead. As we, agreed, as we agreed about the awareness being the important solution, we also have to agree, I think, that jurisdiction over the miscreant has to be with the government law enforcement. Unless we agree to it, that jurisdiction has uh, on those companies uh, is not with the law enforcement agency. Nothing can be done on that. That's all. Okay, I take your point. Uh, we can continue with that conversation another day for sure. But thank you so much to all four of you for joining us right now, viewers. Uh, as our experts have told you, the fact that a Chinese company is collating all this data isn't scary unless we also find out if they're getting some of this data illegally. If they're getting it from the dark web, which has your private details, personal details, uh, which you, uh, shouldn't be in the public domain, or they are get, taking accessing this data from other giants who are not supposed to share it with them, but they are doing that. If, if that's not the case, they're simply collating the data for the 10,000 Indians from the Prime Minister to Radhe Ma and Sachin Tendulkar, the Gandhis and the Sindhyas. Uh, they, they're simply just giving some intelligent inputs, bases, uh, what is available in the public domain to then the Chinese government or the Communist Party or whoever else may be willing to pay them money or take this data from them. What does become concerning for us is that it's not just them, but there may be dozens of such companies and such governments across the globe who are tracking our digital life, who are tracking everything we say, everything we write, everything we share, uh, what we like, what we don't like, what we share, what we click on, uh, how much of what we read, uh, the videos that we watch, we don't watch, we skip, all of that being tracked and then a profile of our behavior being made to then target us to then convince us to be something as simple as buying a product or ordering food to something as sensitive and as complicated as our election choice that's where the problem begins and that's where the debate will continue to raise on for now nobody really no country has a specific answer to how to deal with this. In the new age, in the digital age, that perhaps remains to be 
our biggest challenge. Thank you so much for joining us on debate number two. two.